I'm a asylum seeker from the Gambia. Um, I've been in the system for 10 years now, and still I'm still struggling. Um, it's very difficult to be an um, asylum seeker, especially in a country whereby you, you are a stranger, you have different cultures, you have different people, and to be honest, you live in fear every day. And you lose your dignity, you lose everything in life sometimes. You feel like you don't have nothing. Sometimes we only hold on in our prayers because we think that will keep us going. Being an asylum seeker is, is like, I can't imagine how you feel unless you go through it. I can stand here today, from now up to tomorrow, explain how being an asylum seeker is, but I will never finish it because I've been in the system for 10 years and I'm still fighting. And I'm still in that fear. I don't know what will happen tomorrow. Anything can happen to me tomorrow. But sometimes you have hope because you have people around you who, who support you, who will tell you that one day you will win this fight. But if you are on your own, you feel like they are just saying things that will make you happy, but it's not true. And this is it. Being an asylum seeker is like, it's, it's not different with the people that you guys see in the street begging. Because you can walk, but you are not allowed to walk. Everything that you do, somebody has to do it for you. If you need to buy your clothes, somebody has to support you, to give it to you. If you want to travel, somebody has to give you transport to go, which you can do by yourself. But you became like a beggar. Sometimes you give up in life, you give up. You want to go do things, you want to go out. But you, you just give up because you don't want to ask. Because if you don't ask, you can do it. Sometimes you feel like, hope the people that I'm asking are not getting fed up with me. Yeah, you have that feeling because you are a human being. Though you are an asylum seeker, but you are still a human being. You lose your family, you lose your children. I did not see my kids for 13 good years. I did not see them, I don't know. They are a refugee in another country now. But, sorry, I, I feel like giving up with, in life sometimes. The only thing that is holding me is, Maimuna, come on, one day you will see your kids. But I don't know when is that day. I don't know when is that day. When Corona come, we are like, 17 people in, in my flat, 17 rooms. And we are more, we have people with their children there. All what we were thinking is one day, if somebody die here for the virus, what are we going to do with the body? What is going to happen with us? That fear keep on going on. It keeps going on every day in our lives. But we put all our faith in prayers and people who support us because there are good people who always forget their self and think of the asylum seekers around us. And we have them. I remember one day when I have a call and then they say that, Somebody is coming with money to support you each five, five pounds each in the house. I remember when 
the, when Finn knocked the door and I opened, she gave me that envelope. I looked at her and I said to myself, she give up all. She give up the fear and everything in this time of the, the, the year. She came to us to give us this money. Why can't we be strong? We are asylum seekers, but we are still human beings. We need freedom. We need to be free. We, need to, we, we want to be like everybody else. We want to do things on our own, but we can't. We can't. We are just hold in one place. Every day you wake up and then you are thinking, Today also is going to be the same like yesterday, really? Maimuna, what are you doing? Why are you even here? What are you doing in your life? All my life is going to be being in bed, wake up in the morning, thinking of who will give me five pounds because I want to go to a charity, or I want to go to the hospital, or I want to go somewhere. It's a very hard life. It's a very hard life that asylum seekers and refugees are living in. If you come to the home office system, if you come to the home office system, it's like sometimes you feel like, oh, is it that everybody in this country is like the home office before you get used to the country. If you come new here, you did not meet anybody. <laughs> you, are, you are scared of every white person that you see. Everybody that is white, you are scared of them because you think they are like the home office unless and until you get used to the system and you know people. Sometimes you, you, you are like, yeah, I want to help asylum seeker. I want to support them. Stephanie is our friend. She always comes to the house. But sometimes people will come to me and say, Auntie Maimuna, hope she is not sent by the home office. This is how it is. This is how it is. We don't trust anybody because of the home office. We don't trust the good people because of the home office. We don't trust even the people around us who are supporting us because of the system, because of the home office. And sometimes you feel like you want to give up in your life. Yeah, people do that. You see, they said asylum seekers kill themselves. It's because of the trauma. The home office will ask you, Okay, you said they tortured you. Where is the scar? The scar is inside. The scar is in. And that scar, you are the only person who will see it and feel it. Nobody else. A scar that is outside here, everybody can see it and ask you, oh, what happened to this scar? That will feel better. But the scar inside, nobody is seeing it. This is how asylum seekers feel. Though it's a very nice country here, but home is the best. Even if I have millions here in this country, my kids are the best for me. I don't need the millions. I need freedom. I don't need the money. I need freedom. How can I come to this country and lie for good 13 years and I leave my children behind. Those are my kids. I'm the one who bring them in this world. And every asylum seeker is missing what I'm missing. Every asylum seeker and refugee is missing what I'm missing. Thank you so much for everybody who stand and support asylum seekers. But this is our life.